Not too long ago, I was browsing around on the Steam store, and I kept coming across really interesting multiplayer shooters, and anytime I went onto the community page to see what people were talking about, there seemed to be this reoccurring trend of whether this or that game was going to include bots. Some people reacted very harshly against having bots, while others were all for it. Now with me, I grew up playing many multiplayer games like Perfect Dark, Duke Nukem, a variety of 007 games, as well as more modern multiplayer games like Call of Duty, Apex, Rainbow Six, Verdun, Red Orchestra, and of course the list goes on. And I understand both sides of the situation and their arguments, however, I would like to give my own personal opinion and insight on the matter, and of course chat with you guys in the comments and see how you all feel about this topic. You see, online multiplayer gaming is more popular now than it ever has been, especially multiplayer only games. Some of these multiplayer games have no offline modes, no single player campaigns, no local co-op or multiplayer, and no way of even playing the game without a lobby of real active players. And that could be a huge problem for some people and maybe even a bigger problem for game developers because you see, one of the biggest arguments against online multiplayer only games is that they have a very limited and questionable shelf life, meaning that the life of the game is solely dependent on how many people are actually playing it. Without enough players, you may not even be able to connect to a lobby, at least one with a halfway decent connection, or the developers will just shut down the servers entirely if the game does so poorly that they don't want to continue supporting the remaining player base if they have any left. Case in point would be SOCOM Confrontation and MAG. Those games were online only shooters for the PS3, and they only stuck around for a few years before the devs shut down the servers, ultimately making these two titles now worthless paperweights. On the other side of the fence, we have something like Call of Duty, Operation Flashpoint, Borderlands, Minecraft, hell, even the original Battlefront titles on the PS2. These are games that you can play and enjoy for as long as you physically own them, whether that be one month or maybe 30 years, it doesn't matter. That's a pretty huge deal for some people, including myself. I don't exactly enjoy the idea of spending 60 bucks or whatever on a game that is solely dependent on how many people are actually playing it. Plus, what if the game doesn't sell all that well, or is slammed by the critics and gaming community? Or what happens to a game that is hyped up to the nines, multiplayer only obviously, does well commercially, however its player base is nearly non-existent months later? Well, in the case of the game called Evolve, I guess you go free to play, and then not too long after you shut down your dedicated servers entirely. Thankfully, the game is still playable, only because the developers were nice enough to include bots, unlike MAG and SOCOM Confrontation. A disadvantage that people bring up when it comes to implementing bots is that the game could possibly take longer to produce because creating AI, or at least really good AI, is not exactly the easiest of tasks. Because if you make a game with bots, and they're just god-awful, almost thrown in there like an afterthought, it becomes blatantly obvious that you went that route, and, well, you just wasted your time and annoyed a community of gamers who enjoy playing against bots. I'm a very patient man when it comes to devs releasing games. Hell, I'm a patient man in general. However, the biggest crime for me is when a game company releases half-assed games or games that are buggier than shit because they want to get their crap out there as soon as possible or by whatever deadline they have. Why not just delay the game for a few more months and polish the game? That way you don't piss off everyone who just spent 60 bucks for something that is half-assed or worse yet, broken. Take your time, stop releasing trash only to just patch it months later. 
Another negative comment I've seen towards bots is that some game developers, I guess, don't really understand how to implement bots into a matchmaking system. Like, say you want to join a quick game against real players. I've seen cases, some personally, where the matchmaking system will throw me into a game with a vast majority of players being bots instead of putting me in something with a lot of real players. In those cases, yeah, there's ways to work around it. I mean, you can manually search matches with the majority of players being real people and try to jump into a game that way. Red Orchestra, for example, does a really good job with their matchmaking system, at least with my personal experience. Another thing I've seen is where the matchmaking system will combine your tiny lobby of, let's say, like two or three players with another tiny lobby of equal amounts of players instead of just throwing both lobbies into one that has like half their slots filled with bots. That to me doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I can see why people can become frustrated with that whole thing, but ultimately that's up to the devs to fix kinks in the system to make sure that the matchmaking system is the best it can be to avoid all those annoying bugs which of course takes time ultimately and well some people have zero patience for things like that on the positive side for those in favor of bots is that people like myself enjoy playing against bots because it is more of a stress reliever than anything for example sometimes i come home from work in a long shift and maybe i don't care to play against real people maybe i don't feel like playing with a bunch of randoms that just end up costing me every single match maybe i don't feel like dealing with the trolls or the nasty abusive players i run into pretty much every single day or maybe I just don't feel like playing serious and I just want to have fun and don't want to run the risk of ruining my stats that I worked so hard to achieve. There's even people that won't play online because they have bad social anxiety or I've even seen players that just flat out hate playing against real people. It's more common than I think the community realizes and I understand why someone with anxiety would not want to play online. People are awful when they're hiding behind their keyboards, controllers, or headsets, whatever you want to say. They don't want to deal with those people, and, you know, I can't say I blame them. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've received death threats, hate mail, and just, in general, nasty people I've come across in the last, whatever, 14, 15 some odd years I've been playing online games. Yes, of course, you can mute people. Yes, you can block them, whatever. Although you have to take into consideration some just can't take those disgusting comments. It bothers them on a deep personal level, especially those individuals who happen to be gay and or female. I've experienced firsthand some pretty god awful things whenever I would be in lobbies with friends who were either girls or gay men with very flamboyant tones to their voices. Again, this happens a lot more than people probably want to admit. One of my longtime friends refuses to play online unless he's with a lobby of people he knows for that very reason. And that's unfortunate. One harsh and totally understandable criticism I've heard from players who are against bots is that they fear that if bots are implemented into whatever game they're playing, that people are going to use bot-only modes to abuse and pad their stats and or for rank progression to unlock customizable options or whatever else you can possibly unlock. My counter here is that if people are so concerned about stats padding and rank progression in multiplayer games that utilize bots, then I would suggest developers going in the route of how Call of Duty Black Ops did with their combat training mode. What I mean is that any weapons, any stats, camos, whatever you do get in combat training cannot be carried over into the regular multiplayer. It's an ingenious way of implementing bots and offline play without pissing off its core multiplayer audience. Call of Duty Ghosts kinda did the same thing with squads, but it ultimately failed to capture any solid audience due to how lackluster and, to be honest, poorly implemented it really was. What do you guys think about this topic and do you think that more games, especially multiplayer only games, should include some sort of bots.
I'm also curious to hear whether or not a game being online only matters to you at all. So let me know what you think. And I try to reply to as much comments as I possibly can. Uh, but of course, some do slip through the cracks every now and again. It is what it is. But anyway, guys, thank you all very much for watching. And I hope to make more of these types of videos in the near future. If you have any topics you feel might be worth discussing on an upcoming video, as always, feel free to let me know. And with that said, again, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, take care everyone.